So chances are, if you guys are watching this video, you either own an Atomos monitor and recorder, you're thinking about buying one, or you've heard of them and are wondering quite possibly what could I be talking about when it comes to not getting the most out of the camera monitor. Well, one of the features that sold me on Atomos camera monitors was a feature called Atomos HDR. Basically, what it allows you to do is to view your camera's log footage in an HDR space and see if you are clipping your highlights or if you're retaining shadow detail. Basically, it allows you to get the most dynamic range out of your camera and pinpoint your exposure. But what if I told you that these 500 or so dollar camera monitors could be used for non-color critical HDR workflows in DaVinci Resolve? Let's talk about it. What's good, everybody? For those of you guys who are new to my channel, my name is Sydney Baker Green. I'm an international wedding and portrait photographer, cinematographer, and colorist, and I have been waiting such a long time for today's video. Today, we are going to be talking about how you can use your Atomos camera monitors and recorders that have the Atomos HDR feature as reference monitors in DaVinci Resolve for HDR color grading. Now, like I said, this is non-color critical. And you may be thinking, well, Sydney, why wouldn't you just do a true HDR workflow so we could get the best of the best. Well, the point is simple. HDR workflows are super expensive to get into. And for that matter, right now, a lot of people are still viewing content in standard dynamic range. However, I'm making this video because although it's expensive, pretty soon, all of the content that people are going to start consuming is going to be in HDR. It's kind of similar to the start of 1080p to 4K and how we saw all of those panels originally in 4K, they were super expensive. A lot of TVs were still in 1080p or in 2K and weren't quite at 4K yet. And now 4K is common, it's the standard, and it was just as expensive as a regular 1080p panel. Furthermore, iPhone 12s, iPhone 13s, the flagship Android devices, and even the new MacBook Pros now have HDR displays. So right now is the perfect time to at least start learning how to do color grading in an HDR workspace, how to set it up, and at least kind of get you started with that so that you can be ahead of the game when the technology becomes more available. Also, I don't want you guys to have to go out and purchase $10,000, $20,000 HDR reference monitors if you guys can't afford them, but I want you guys to have the tools to succeed. So before we get into this, let's talk about the drawbacks real quick of this and why it's not color critical. And by color critical, I simply mean mastering for Amazon Prime, Netflix, or Paramount Plus, or Disney Plus in HDR, one of those big companies that require a extremely precise pipeline or even getting a Dolby Vision license or HDR10 license. So the two biggest drawbacks are simple. These $500 camera monitors are built just for on-set recording, right? And on-set monitoring. So they're not the most accurate when it comes to color rendition as a mastering display would be that's dedicated to simply mastering content on your computer in your NLE. Furthermore, when it comes to these camera monitors, the panels are not true 10-bit panels. They are 8-bit panels with 2 bits through FRC. So it's something that we would call fake 10-bit. Even the Atomos Neon line has one panel that is that fake 10-bit panel. You have to go with their most expensive panel to get that true 10-bit color. We will have that on the channel soon, so hit that subscribe button so you can stay tuned for the true workflow. But that's just something to keep in mind. Now with that, let's finish this up by talking about how do you do it. Well, first things first, you're gonna wanna take your camera monitor and plug in the HDMI to the computer. Now, if you wanna take a step up, you can install a Decklink card into your computer and get a clean HDMI output that simply bypasses your computer's color management profiles. So you know exactly what you're getting is coming from your NLE, in this case, DaVinci Resolve. So once you have plugged in this monitor and you have identified what the monitor is, now you wanna go into DaVinci Resolve and start setting some things up before we get to the camera monitor. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you turn on the video clean output so that you're referencing exactly what you would see in the viewer on this monitor. This is done by going into the workspace tab, finding the video clean section, and then selecting whatever number the monitor is as identified on your computer. In this case, mine is generic monitor plug and play number two. So I'm going to select that, and then now I am viewing what should be on my viewer on my monitor. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to set up your timeline color space and color management. 
To do this, go to Project Settings, the Color Management tab, and here's where you have a few options. You can either color grade in ASUS 1.2, or you can use a DaVinci YRGB color management profile using the DaVinci Wide Gamut preset, but that's not the important part. You can choose whichever one you want to do. ASUS or the DaVinci YRGB Color Managed, the most important part is that the timeline color space is in a HDR color space. What does this mean? It means you have two options when it comes to these color spaces. You can either use DCI P3 at D65 ST2084 at 1000 nits in the case of this monitor, or you can use RET2020 D65 ST2084 at 1000 nits. Now my Atomos Ninja Flame display has a 1500 nit brightness. You can use 2000 nits and then change HDR mastering to 1500 nits brightness in this case, but I'm gonna simply keep it at 1000 nits for this purpose. So after all of that is set up, the next thing I want you to do is go ahead and take whatever your output color space is, put that into the Dolby Vision panel, and then turn on Dolby Vision as well. This is gonna help you get a little bit more accurate when it comes to your conversion. I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second. The last step is to set up your camera monitor so that it is in the HDR color space as well, or its interpretation of it. What you're gonna wanna do is turn on Atomos HDR, select the camera as Rec 2100, Gamma as PQ ST2084, and your color space as DCI P3. Now, just a quick note, if you are going to be going to YouTube, then I would recommend you do use Rec 2020 because that is what YouTube is designed for and unfortunately does not support DCI P3, which is kind of a shame and it also doesn't support Dolby Vision, it supports HDR10, which is why I had you turn that on as well. Now that that is done, you can simply go through, select your camera's input color spaces, and continue to grade as normal, as I have always taught you on this channel. You just want to make sure that those input color spaces are selected, and then start your node trees and start applying things and play around and have fun. When you're finally done with your color grading, you feel like it looks good on your monitor, here's my little quick tip for you. I want you to go ahead and go to that Dolby Vision panel. By default, it should be at 100 nits in BT1886. And what this will allow you to do is when you select or analyze a frame or the entire clip that you've selected or your entire timeline if you want to with the options in that panel, it's going to show you the SDR conversion. Now what I use this to do is I simply fine tune that SDR conversion and look at it now on the monitor that I know is calibrated for Rec. 709, my main display that you'll see back there. This is just a little quick tool that I think will help you guys when it comes to making sure that your grade looks the same across devices because sometimes it can actually look a little bit different because again, these monitors aren't designed for color critical work. And then again, if you are going to export to YouTube, make sure that you're just going ahead and doing an analyzation in HDR10 as well, which is done in your color tab. I hope this gives you some more tools that you need to succeed and become better creators. If you guys like this video, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and turn on those post notifications if you have not. Be sure to share this video with somebody who may be interested in getting into HDR workflows who have an Atomos monitor. And be sure to leave me a comment down below if you need any clarifications on any of this. Be sure to follow me on my social media as well as the YouTube fam. The links are in the description down below. And now more than ever, my friends, if you are ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, remember, every day airplanes take off against the wind. Keep climbing, stay inspired, guys. And as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney Baker Green, and I will see you beautiful people next time. Peace out.